Welcome back to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today I wanted to go through linear regression again. Yes, I know I've done linear regression quite a bit. However, today I want to show how to do it in Python. I didn't realize that I never demonstrated how to do this within Python, and it's relatively simple. You're going to have to pip install a couple of packages, but other than that, it's really simple. You can copy this code almost, you know, verbatim in this, and it's not going to be a problem for you. Now, the only thing that I am going to note is that in this example, I am not importing from a CSV. You will want to import from a CSV. So in the video, I'm going to go kind of quickly through all of the code that you're going to want to write. And I'm not going to dive into too much on why you're writing that exact thing. You're going to have to just trust me that it works and it's the proper way. If you have questions on how any of these functions or behaviors work within Python, I would suggest checking out any of the forums online. Maybe checking, uh, you know, chat GPT, seeing what it has to say about why and how it works this way. I really don't want to take your time and get in the nitty gritty when you don't want to necessarily learn coding. You want to learn how to build models. So enough of that. Let's jump to Python. Okay, so for this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to do this linear regression within Python. Now in here, I do have this zoomed in, so hopefully the font is a little bit easier to read. Some people have previously said it is too difficult to read the font, so I've gone ahead and hopefully zoomed in enough that this is helpful. So again, first you're going to want to get the sklearn installed and pip install that, as well as numpy. And we're going to go ahead and start this up. So we're going to say from sklearn.linear model import linear regression. And then we're going to say from sklearn.metrics, we're going to go ahead and import r2 source. Now, again, this is graying out because this isn't really being called anywhere. So it's not going to really have any reason to be used yet. So let me fix this linear regression. There we go. It was a capitalization issue, which is why I was getting the red squiggly. Besides this, we're going to also need to import numpy as np and import stats models.api as sm. Now we're going to create a function here and call it linear regression. And we're going to have an X, a Y, and new data equals none. And then we're going to put our colon on the end there. And when we hit enter, we should now be inside our function. So let's put in a quick note. We're going to create the linear regression model. So LR is for linear regression. So I'm going to say model, and I'm going to say equal linear regression. And now we're just going to open and close these parentheses. So now we're going to be stashing our model into that. And it's going to again be model. So then we're going to want to do the next thing. We're going to want to say fit. So again, these notes are going to help you track where you're at and what you're doing. So I'm going to say fit. Now what we're doing here is we're going to fit the data. So we're going to say model dot fit X and Y. So that is going to be for the data that we're going to be passing into this model again. We are doing this as a function. So we're going to create the function with all the stuff we're going to do. And then at the very bottom, we're going to call the function and then pass the data in. So if this doesn't make sense, hang with it. It's going to make a lot more sense near the end here. Now I'm going to say the R squared. So in a linear regression within Microsoft Excel, you can run your linear regression. You'll see the data. It'll give you the R squared. It'll give you the P stats and all of that. Right now, we're going to create ways to see this information so that that way we can evaluate whether or not our model is going to be of value. So we're going to say y pred equals model dot predict x. Oops, big x there. All right, then we're going to say r squared is going to equal r2 score. And then in here, we're going to say y y pred. I don't really want to go too deep into why you're writing these things the way you are. Um, you got to just trust that this is going to have method to the madness and it's going to make sense in the end. So squared colon quote, and then we're going to go ahead and then pass in our value here, which is going to be r squared. So here we're going to set up y pred is equal to the model, which we put up here. Um, and we're going to predict based upon X, which is going to give us this value. Then we're going to pass this value into this R2 score. And then we're going to pass in the Y as well. 
and then we're going to end up printing what that r squared value is going to be. Then we're going to want to go ahead and evaluate the p values. So the p values again are very important. So I'm going to say x intercept equals sm dot add constant, and that constant is going to be x. Oops, and it went ahead and gave me some parentheses automatically. I always type ahead too fast. Then we're going to say model underscore sm equals sm dot ols y x with x intercept, there we go, dot fit. So now this again is going to use OLS to try and fit all this stuff and eventually we're going to get our p values. So then we're going to want to print those p values and say p dash values colon and then comma because then we're going to put in here what that value is going to be. It's going to be model sm dot p values. Now let's move on. Now we need to get the coefficients. So I'm just gonna put C right there. So um, actually let's make it a little more clear, coef. And then that way we know this is for the coefficients and we're gonna say we're gonna print coef and then we will put in here again the comma and then the value of model dot coef and then that underscore. Then we're gonna print the intercept, int so I don't want to shorthand this because int can mean integer encoding. So I'm just going to actually write intercept and then we'll say model dot intercept underscore. And again, uh, the IntelliS type, you know, is going to show you what you should be passing in there. That way, if you think you're doing a typo, you'll be able to catch it and just make the correct selection. So right now we are going ahead and import all of the packages that we're going to use. We've defined out a function. And in here, we're going to go ahead and create a linear regression and assign it to model. Then we're going to fit that model. Then we're going to pass in some values in here to get our R squared from that model. Then we're going to have the P values generated for this model. And then we're going to get our coefficients and our intercepts. And again, this is very similar to what we're doing in Microsoft Excel. We're just now doing it in code form. So then we need to actually get the predictions. So we're going to come in here and predictions. And again, this is just notation so that we can easily read this. If new, new data is not none, then we're going to go ahead and say predictions equals model dot predict new data. There we go. And we're going to say print predictions based on data. And then in here, we're going to again, comma and predictions. Okay. So in here, it's going to go ahead and evaluate the new data. So now we need to go ahead and create the data that we're going to be passing in. So I'm just going to say data pass. And again, this is just for note taking X equals NP dot array. Now in here, I'm just going to create an array set of data that I'm going to copy and paste in. Um, in here, you can be passing in data from a CSV or any kind of file that you see fit. So we're going to go ahead and just pass in some basic data. Then I'm going to say y equals np dot array and same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in some data. So here I'm saying there are three values that I think will impact the outcomes. So here we've got three independent variables impacting a single dependent variable. In this, right, we have this array, and this array, and this array. So this set of three independent variables would predict this, this set of three independent predict this, this three would have predicted this. That's again based upon our model if our model is valid. So then we need to say new data equals np.array, and we're gonna go ahead and pop some data in here as well. Now again, this is going to go ahead and set up for our predictions. So originally what we have here is data that's training data. So the model is going to learn based upon the data that we have here. And then we're going to be passing in the actual new data that it's going to use to predict. So think of this as the historical information we've used in Excel in the past. And then this is the data that you're going to use 
to predict moving forward. So if this was like, say, a basketball model, right, we would create a linear regression with historical independent variables predicting outcomes. And then from this, we're going to go ahead and use whatever method we had to predict these independent variables for the outcome of an upcoming game, run it through the model and see what happens. So let's go ahead and roll this on up. And then I will finally say print outcomes. In here we will say fit linear regression x, y, and new data. So in here, this is gonna go ahead and spit all of this out for us. Um, now in here, this is wrong, so let me fix this. I did a typo, okay, so up here I just called it linear regression. Um, so this function is now gonna say run. So what happens here is we're importing all the packages we need. We have a defined function here that says, hey, if you pass me an x, y, I'm gonna churn through all of this and spit out an answer down here. Then we're gonna say, here's a bunch of data. We've got the X, we've got historical Y. Then we have new anticipated X, and we're gonna to wanna to see what that would spit out as for the Y. So we've created the information we're gonna pass into the function. So then here, we're saying, all right, go use the function, pass in this variable, which is defined here, pass in this variable, which is defined here, and pass in this da data that is defined here. So then when you look at the function, we're still passing those three objects into it, and it's gonna run through this model and then spit out the results. So let's go ahead and hit play. So this is the output. We have an R squared of one. We have P values here, and as you can see, they're in scientific notation, so you gotta shift that decimal all the way to the left 15 times um, that we can expect. Here, we have another tiny number, another tiny number, Again, our coefficients are here that we'd use in our outputs. Then we have our intercept, and then this is the predictions of what it was using. So in here, we can go ahead and mess with some of these numbers here. So let's change some of these around for the X. So as you can see here, I went ahead and added a bunch of example data and test data. So previously with you know only a couple to a few sets of data, we were getting an R squared of one, which means it's a perfect fit. Not really realistic at all in any sense. So I went ahead and created this in Microsoft Excel, copy and pasted it and dropped it in for the training information of historical values. Then we're gonna go ahead and pass in some modified data here as our new data. And we're gonna see what we get. So again, previously we had a small sample set of data, so it was spitting out, hey, you're doing great, you're getting a one, a perfect match, amazing. Now I don't expect that, I expect this to be much closer to, so as you can see here, based upon that completely random data, we are now getting an R squared of 0 0.09, terrible. We're also getting really bad p-values. You know, here it's above of 0 0.05, way above 0 0.05, way above 0 0.05, way above 0 0.05 and the coefficients at this point do not matter because the R squared is trash and so is the p-values. The intercept won't matter either because it is trash and these predictions don't matter because it is trash. So in here, using larger data improves the model, right? Not necessarily louder and larger data being noisy, but just larger sets of historical information will drastically improve the model as it would in Microsoft Excel. So this is a very simplistic way that you can write a linear regression model within Python. Now in here, again, I'm passing in this data here in actual explicit data arrays. You would want to try and import it through a CSV file. That way you can have all of the data that you need loaded in, have the comparisons as well, and it'll be able to pull that apart. I suggest doing that with something like pandas and data frames, load the data in through the CSV. Don't manually type this in, it will make your code huge because you're passing in a massive set of real data versus just letting it read from the file. So that is the Python linear regression. It's not overly complicated by any means, as long as you just copy and go with the code. Now, again, if you're trying to learn what the code does, how it works and all of that, check the forums, check ChatGPT, check all of the uh, manuals and things like that online that you can find for Python. In regards on how I did it again in the demo, I did not import a CSV. Now for my models, when I run linear regressions in Python, I do use a CSV file. 
However, here it's a little bit simpler to try and explain so you can show and see the data within the arrays as the variables. If you have any questions or comments about this method, the way I implemented it, or need some help on how to implement it, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than willing to help you out and try the best I can. If you have a more optimized way and you're an actual developer and know how to write Python really well, please let me know if there's something I could do that's better. I'm always wanting to learn and evolve my process and my code. Uh, again, I'm not a professional developer. This is what I've picked up on my own over time. So this may not be as efficient as it could be. If you like the content I am providing or found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification icon. That way you are alerted as soon as the next video is available. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, please give it a like or a thumbs up if you could. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm and other people that want to learn this kind of thing can find the video a little bit easier. If you want to talk more in depth on this or any of the other videos I have posted in the past, feel free to reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt, or you can reach me in the unabated Discord as the T. So that is it for today. Until next time, happy wagering.